idea. I just got home now. I know, I know, I been slacking. I'm gonna make that video. Yeah, I know you're looking to get that 24 Ultra. Instead of me just showing you how to do it, I'm just gonna make a video, and that way you can follow the video and you can send that to all your friends and family. That way they know how to set up their S24 Ultras as well. All right, all right, later. Oh my God. What's going on everyone, Tech Tosh coming at you guys. I know, I finally come into the video how to set up your S24 Ultra. Now, there's so many things I can go over with this phone, comparing it and all that good stuff with the 15 Pro Max, because I've been running the S24 Ultra now with my 15 Pro Max side by side, and I've been enjoying the S24 Ultra, but I still enjoy my 15 Pro Max. But this video is gonna be on the S24 Ultra, how to utilize it to its optimal settings, and also get it looking to the most sleekest, peakest design, but I'm gonna show you how I utilize it, and then you can kind of get creative and go however you want to go about it. If you're interested in that, be sure to hit this subscribe button. You know the deal. I don't have to repeat myself. I'm sure you hear this in every video you watch. If you're someone who likes to utilize the in-screen fingerprint scanner, I have a little shortcut for you guys. Now there's two reasons why you might want to do this little shortcut. One, obviously is a shortcut meant to save some time. Two, it'll allow you to implement more fingers than what the phone actually is set up. So it's set up to have four fingers. You can bypass that by doing this shortcut. Now the shortcut essentially is when you go to scan in your finger when it does the percentage from whatever zero to a hundred percent well instead of changing your finger around directionally you're going to switch between the same finger on each hand so that way you get two fingers per scan now obviously you want to make sure it's the exact same finger so if you're doing your index finger on your left hand you're going to switch it over to the right hand index finger until you hit that hundred percent just keep alternating between each finger and then from there that will be one scan for two fingers you do the same thing for your thumb and whatever the other finger you want to use so all right now the next settings we're going to adjust is some stuff in display settings I'm gonna run through a few things here and I'll kind of explain sometimes why I have it that way. Now, dark mode for me personally is a must. I run dark mode on almost everything I can, no matter what it is. App wise, I just like dark mode. Adaptive brightness, I do keep on. So that essentially will allow your phone to adjust to whatever environment you're in. Just saves me a little bit of time from scrolling down into the notification center and adjusting it myself. Motion smoothness is the next thing that I'm gonna recommend you have on adaptive. Now, adaptive will allow you to get that 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, it isn't gonna be consistently 120 hertz it's going to adjust to when it finds the need to have it at 120 hertz hence adaptive but it does allow it to get up to 120 hertz rather than standard which is stuck at 60. now i mean if you're spending this much money on a phone like this why are we turning things off feature wise to save battery if that's the case then we might as well just get a mid-tier phone and save the money but yeah adaptive definitely a must for the 124 for 120 hertz refresh rate i have eye comfort shield turned off and adaptive color tones those essentially are just to help with the blue light and some of the warmness in the phones on the time and day and stuff like that i just have that turned off uh, next thing is screen vivid now there was a little bit of controversy with this settings personally on the s24 ultra lineup when you had vivid and natural mode it didn't change at all it was just stuck on natural so they did adjust that with the late february update which we're already past now. So if you go into advanced settings here, on the bottom here, there is a dial now that'll allow you to adjust the vividness and it actually does apply it. Unlike before, it just wouldn't do anything. Definitely a lot more popular colors than previously. I did put it on the highest vividness. I put the dial all the way up. This is what I like personally. The next big thing I'm gonna recommend, especially like I said, you're spending this much money on a device like this, you're gonna wanna get the highest resolution. I mean, that's just common sense. QHD plus is what you're gonna wanna put it on when you go to the screen resolution. Resolution. By default, it is on FHD plus. So this will give you the full 1440p screen. That is definitely a must. Other than edge panels, I do like having that on. That's personal preference. Just allows you to get those shortcuts. One swiping to the side of your screen, whatever side you want to put it on. Accidental touch protection, I have that turned on. And touch sensitivity, I have that turned on as well. Now, I don't have a screen protector put on. I did put one on and I just couldn't deal with it. I just, I just like having the new Gorilla Glass tech that allows you to have less glare. So I ended up taking it off, but touch sensitivity is essentially when you have a glass screen protector or any screen protector, essentially that's when you want to turn that on. Accidental touch, that's obviously common sense. When it's in your pocket, you don't want it pushing buttons. So it should help with that. All right, next thing is in batteries. Now there's only a few things I want to adjust. Some of this stuff might be by default, but I'm just going to run through it. Now me personally, I don't have battery protection turned on. For people who just keep their phone on a charger and it happens to be on a charger for you know hours on end, 
in and you usually don't take your phone off a lot, turn that on because what that's gonna do is preserve your battery from just being overcharged. So me personally, I honestly can go a whole day without even putting my phone on the charger. Woke up and it would have like 30% left. Good thing that this device, which we're gonna check, has fast charging. So you're gonna be able to charge your phone up fast enough if you happen to not keep your phone on a charger at all times. Next thing at the bottom, if you scroll down, you'll see show battery percentage. Me personally, I like that. And then if you go into charge settings, you also want to make sure your fast charging and fast wireless charging is enabled. Now for the next thing that I didn't know I needed to do, but for whatever reason, I would accidentally do this and it would drive me insane. It has to do with the lock screen. So if you go into lock screen and always on display, I have always on display on because that's just Samsung's thing. You gotta have always on display on. Now how you want to have that set up, that's up to you as far as widgets and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into that. But one thing I will say is if you go into the bottom here where it says touch and hold to edit, turn that off because that drives me insane. You ever go into your lock screen, you tap it to turn your phone on and then you hold it for your fingerprint scanner, but your face scanner got your face first before your fingerprint scanner and then you're holding your thumb on it and then it goes into your lock screen edit. Drove me insane. For whatever reason, it was only on this phone that I've ever had to like do that with. I guess it's because it's new, but turn that off. So that way when you're in your lock screen and your face gets scanned before your fingerprint, you won't always go into your editing screen for changing your lock screen wallpaper. Now the next one is gonna apply to all this new AI features that they boast about with the S24 Ultra, which is eventually going to go to other Galaxy devices in 2025, if not sooner. So kind of a gimmick in my opinion, but nonetheless, if you're excited about these AI features, the best way to ensure that you have those enabled on your device is to scroll down in your settings till you get to advanced features. From advanced features, you get on the very top, you should see advanced intelligence. Click on that. And from there, you're just going to go through this list here. You're going to see phone, Samsung keyboard, interpreter, Samsung notes, voice recorder, Samsung internet, and photo editor. You want to click on each one of these if these are the features that you want from AI and you're going to turn those on or at least make sure they're turned on. On the bottom here you also see a switch for process data only on device. Now essentially what this is going to do it's going to be a little bit slower when doing the AI stuff but it's going to keep all that data on your phone rather than running it through their servers. So that's kind of the cool thing with the S24 Ultra it does have a chip to process all that. Now from here we're going to go into side button. Side button I have it set up for double click the power button to turn on flashlight. Now you can do whatever you want. You can have it open up an app. You can have it do, for the most part, whatever it is, like I said, you want it to do. Kept it simple, flashlight. After advanced features, we're gonna go ahead and go into device care. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make sure that we have enough RAM utilized on our device to its max capabilities. So to do that, we're gonna click on memory. Then from there, you're gonna see at the very bottom, RAM plus. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that's on the max, which is eight gigabytes. Now essentially what this is, is it utilizes your storage for RAM as well. So for whatever storage that you're not using, they can separate that to be used for RAM. So it'll give you up to eight gigs extra of RAM. You essentially don't need it, but again, you have a phone that's capable of doing this and optimizing your phone to have more RAM. Mostly not gonna utilize it, like I said, but it's there. All right, so with this next settings, we're gonna enable developer mode. You're gonna have to do a few little steps to do that. That, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. And we're gonna change two things to get developer mode enabled. We're gonna go into about phone. From there, you're gonna go into software information. And then from there, you're gonna look for baseband ver or build number. You're gonna click on build number multiple times. You're gonna see like a pop-up at the bottom saying some click it three, two, one to enable developer. Once that's enabled, you're gonna back back out, back back out. You're gonna back out of settings and then you're gonna go to the main settings screen. And at the very bottom of your settings, you should see developer options. If you don't see that, then you didn't click it enough. Just go back, redo it, should be good to go. So within developer options, we're gonna go ahead and scroll about almost down to the bottom. You're gonna see window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animation duration scale. By default, they're gonna be on one X. Now I have the animations turned off for all three. So literally it just goes right to whatever it is you're trying to click on. Again, if you wanna make it a little bit faster but still have animations, change it to 0 0.05. Now this next thing is optional, but this is something I've actually been enjoying on the Ultra device. It reminds me back in the day when I used to cut customize my stuff when it came to like rooting your Android phone and putting custom operating systems like Cyanogen and stuff like that. This gives you a little bit of adjustments to your OS. This will allow you to change or downscale the size of your OS on your device. And essentially what this will do is make your phone look a little bit, what's the word? I want to say bigger, but it shrinks everything down so it's not as big on your phone and gives you more real estate on your phone. Nothing crazy, but enough to where it makes it feel like more of like a tablet-esque rather than 
than like a phone. So me personally, if you look at your DP, by default, it's gonna be in like the 300, 385, I think. Me personally, I have mine on 485. So the higher you go, the smaller the OS is gonna look on your phone. Now it's gonna get out of whack if you go too crazy. So you gotta find a happy medium. Now 485 is the sweet spot for me. You can kind of mess around with that, you know, look for whatever it is you're looking for. If you're someone who has bad eyes and it's just gonna make things smaller for you. So you might not like that. All right, so this next thing I'm gonna recommend to you guys is the launcher that I use. Now I've been using this launcher for years. It's been out for a while and I've been using Nova launcher. It's like my go-to. I've tried all different ones. This seems to be the one that's the holy grail. Do literally everything in here. I'm not gonna walk through the entire setup of Nova launcher because there's a lot to it. I'm gonna run through some of the key features with Nova launcher. So now me personally, the first few things that I do is swipe gestures. Now some people don't like swipe when it comes to like the notification bar or like even down at the bottom. Me, I like swipe everything. Less buttons on my screen, the better. This will give you even more. You can get swipes, swirls, pinches, zooms, all types of ways to open up different things that you want to open up. In order to do that, you're going to go into the Nova Launcher settings. From there, you're going to go into gestures and inputs. Now from here, you can kind of look at all the gestures that they have. A lot of mine are like pinch in, swipe down, swipe up, open app drawer, notification bar. I got the pinch in to open up settings, pinch out to open up Nova settings. I got the double tap for Google search. So when I double tap anywhere on my screen, it will open up the Google search. One, I like reading the Google news. It'll give me some articles that I can just scroll through and read what's going on, recommend some tech stuff to me. So that's always nice. And then also at the very top, you get a search bar. So if I wanna search something real quick, I don't have to have a search bar on my home screen. And if I don't feel like typing, I can tap the Google voice search. So I can voice something real quick if I'm searching for directions or whatever. So just quick and easy to utilize some features that your default launcher doesn't allow you to do. So you can check out all those. Again, I like the swipe features and the double taps and stuff like that. That's a key feature for me with this launcher. Now the next thing is how to get custom apps. Now, if you can see mine are kind of colorful and vibrant and it blends in real nice with my wallpaper. This is like my go-to app pack and wallpaper. I don't know for whatever reason I'll tinker around with other wallpapers but I just keep going back to this live wallpaper. It's just swirling across the screen. It's just kind of therapeutic in a sense. I don't know and then when you touch it the lines move towards where you're tapping. Now the cool thing with this wallpaper is you can customize the colorways to whatever you want it to look like. This is just the colorways that I chose and it looks nice with the app pack that I have. Very vibrant, makes the colors pop. Definitely recommend it. Unlike Samsung themes you go through the Galaxy Store. Now to get icon packs that are compatible with Nova you're gonna have to go through the Play Store to get the icon packs for the Nova Launcher. There's so many different ones. Some are free, some are paid. The wallpaper that I have personally is in the Play Store. So if you look at OLED wallpaper, we'll just type that in, wallpaper. You're gonna probably have a couple things that pop up, but what you're looking for is that you'll see the, it just says AMOLED, that's the name of it. It just says AMOLED on it. It is by Maxilis.net. Again, it is a free version, but they do have a paid thing that allows you to get more features. That's what I have set up. I know a lot of people were asking about that. Now we got the launcher, we got the wallpapers, we figured out how to get custom icon packs. The next thing I'm gonna show you is some other custom features that allow you to tinker with some of the notification colorway, some keyboard customization, some lock screen customization, a lot of things that you can change on top of what Samsung allows you to do by default. So it's called Good Lock. I'm sure a lot of you nerds out there already know about Good Lock, but for people who aren't aware about what Good Lock is, is it has a host of downloads that you can download within Good Lock that allow you to customize a lot of different features with your phone that you can't do by default. I'm not gonna go through everything that it offers, but there's a couple things in there that I wanna show you guys. Now, one of the first things that I would recommend, just kind of finish that whole theme of your phone if you're really theming your phone, is go into Theme Park. You're gonna obviously have to install it, but once you have Theme Park installed, this is gonna give you options to customize a lot of little things. So you can go here at the bottom, I'll show you. You have your Theme tab, which allows you to create custom themes. I'm just gonna show you the keyboard and quick panel. Now what this is gonna do is obviously allow you to get your keyboard customized. So if you tap on the keyboard tab at the bottom there, you click on Create New, it'll allow you to sit there and tinker around with some of the colorways of what you want your keyboard to look. I mean, literally everything from the backdrop to the keys itself, to the font color of the keys, to the transparency of some of this stuff. It's gonna take some tinkering around. It does look a little confusing, but as you can see here, it does have circles around what you are gonna wanna change. So for instance, there's a circle right here around one of the keys, you're gonna tap on that and you can change color or you can input an image. Now, not everything you're gonna be able 
able to input an image, I don't believe, but you can change the colorway for literally everything and get it to be, like I said, cohesive with your theme. And then the next thing would be quick panels. So quick panels is obviously this notification center here when you swipe down and it gives you all those little shortcuts that you can enable and disable in your notification bar. So you can do the same thing, just like the keyboards. You're gonna go create new. From there, it's gonna kind of guide you. So it has circles around what you wanna change that color way. So I have a circle around the text, circle around the backdrop, and then you just click on it, change the color ways. You're gonna, like I said, you're gonna have to tinker around with it, figure out what color ways look good with what. So a lot of adjusting, I'm not gonna do a full walkthrough, but those are the two things I would recommend changing or customizing when you get your theme all set up. So you can have a very cohesive look and it's gonna be definitely a lot different than other people who have the S24 Ultra who aren't aware of this stuff. So very cool stuff. Again, look at lock, good luck. There's a lot of stuff in here. I can go on for an hour talking about everything on here. There's so many things you can change. Pentastic which will allow you to get custom sounds when you pull out your S Pen. You got Lockstar, which will give you custom, even more customization on your lock screen. Definitely recommend checking out every single one of them because you know you get bored, you have this device, you're gonna be turning it on, looking at it, why not tinker around with it? Good Lock is a good place to start with that. But that's just the gist of it for me personally when getting my phone set up to look and perform the way I want it to look. Now this device, like I said, I can go on forever for how many features this phone has. I haven't even got into like the custom AI that allows you to create custom wallpapers through AI, which is kind of limited, but nonetheless, the phone has it on there to where you don't even have to have a wallpaper pack on here. You can have AI on your device, create a custom wallpaper for you. If you guys are interested in more stuff like this, I can go more in depth or talk about other things in general that you can do with this device. Nonetheless, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys did enjoy it, appreciate it. If you could hit that thumbs up. Other than that, I'll see you on the next video. Y'all stay nerdy. Peace. Let's see how you do under pressure. Oh, yeah, I've been wanting this shit forever.